Welcome back guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and today we will be installing Linux on one of these Android TV boxes. So let's get started. So the version that I have is called the MeQ M8S. Now it doesn't really matter what brand or what version you get, it's actually the internals that really matter. Now I managed to pick one of these guys up from Gearbest for $36. I'll leave a link in the description below. This in particular has a barrel connector, a HDMI network port, a headphone jack, then two USBs and SD card. Now the SD card is very important because we need to use that to install our Linux partition. This default is built with Android 7.1, but has probably the ugliest interface I have ever seen. I don't know why they use the Internet Explorer icon for our browser. Meanwhile, they're actually using Chrome. It just bothers me a little. What I mean by the internals of this guy, this is actually using an M-Logic S905X. Now, if you see my review on the Kados Vim 2, that actually uses the M-Logic S912X. And then their prior version, which is the Vim version 1, that one uses the 905 just like this. Now, most devices or any other devices with different brands that uses the M-Logic S905X, you should be able to use this same method to turn it into Linux. This method that we're using will not delete the Android partition that's inside. So basically it'll boot off the SD card and when you don't have the SD card inside, it'll boot right into Android. So you still get to use Android OS. All right, so let's get started with installing this guy. First, we're gonna have to head over to this website which I'll leave a link in the description below. Now download the partition that you want, whether it's being Debian or Ubuntu, with the desktop, without you know the server or not. Once you're done with that, we need to extract the files and then load up Etcher. Now in Etcher, we would just load the SD card. Now the SD card has to be anything above four gigs. Once we load the SD card with this image, we will stick the SD card into the device. Now in the device itself, you should have going into the menus, an app called Update or Update and Backup. That's what we need to click. As soon as you press that, you want to use local storage. In the local storage, you'll find this one file called AM something. I forgot what the exact name of it is, but AM something. That's the file that you need to load and that's the only file that you'll see. Once you click on that, just hit OK and it's going to go through a little bit of process and two reboots about. After the two reboots, it's going to start booting from the SD card. Now from the SD card, the first boot, it's not going to get you into any menus or anything. It's using Armbian. First thing it's going to ask you to do is log in as root. So the root user is root, obviously, and the password is 1234. As soon as you log in, it's going to ask you to change your password right away. Once you're done with that, it's going to ask you to make a new user account, which is fine because that's the main user you're going to be logging in with. So name it, whatever you want to name it, and then give it a password. Once you're done with that, it's going to automatically reboot load right into the Ubuntu desktop if you got the desktop installed or the server installed. And that's it. That's installing Linux onto this whole thing. Now, there's some tricks and tips and stuff like that to get other stuff going. Now, if you got a remote or the Wi-Fi is not working, there are ways to get it working. Now, in my particular model, Wi-Fi was not working whatsoever and they didn't have the drivers baked into the kernel or anything, so I couldn't even get the Wi-Fi working. Didn't bother me much because I was gonna use the ethernet cable anyway. So moving forward, I'm gonna leave a link to the forum on what the troubleshooting steps are to get certain specific things working. Now, if you have a remote, you could just load in that, this app. If you have a different screen resolution, you could just modify a little line inside the HDMI.sh file. Now, lastly, I started this whole new benchmarking thing that everybody likes, I guess, which is mining. And I'm pretty sure I already feel the comments. You guys are gonna ask me, what is the mining speed on this guy, mining Magicoin? Now, I already installed the app, loaded it up, and on four cores, it runs about 13.77, which is not bad, much faster than Raspberry Pi 3. So for 35 bucks, 36 bucks, you're getting more hash rates. It's a faster processor. You're just losing out on you know the GPIO pins and everything. This is more like a desktop slash server or micro server that you could use for your home. Well, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it up in the comments below. Guys, are new to this channel, hit that little subscribe button and also if, don't forget to hit that little notification bell icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.